Hi, I'm Rick Lamont, and I'm a geologist. I spend my free time on hilltops looking for 10,000-year-old beaches. I'm in Salem, Massachusetts, where, not so long ago, there was something here that weighed heavily on the land. It snuffed out life, it altered the terrain, and it made New England inhospitable. I'm speaking, of course, of a glacier. Specifically, it was the Laurentide Ice Sheet. About 20,000 years ago, ice over three kilometers thick covered Canada and much of the northern United States. This was not just an ice age. This was the last glacial maximum, the most recent of a series of ice ages. All that ice, where did it come from? For thousands of years, rain and snow fell and was frozen into the ice sheet. Water that would normally flow through rivers and streams back to the ocean was locked away on land. As a result, sea level dropped globally by 125 meters. As the climate warmed up, the ice melted and sea level slowly returned to normal. And that should be the end of the story. But if it is, then why do I look for beaches on the tops of hills? The surface of the earth is comprised of rigid plates. These lithospheric plates float on part of the mantle called the asthenosphere. The rock in the asthenosphere is so hot that it is soft and ductile. To say the rock is fluid or that it flows would be overstating it, but you could say it is thicker than molasses in January. That might not be a good analogy, though, because on January 15th, 1919, in the north end of Boston, Massachusetts, a molasses storage tank burst unleashing a torrent of 8 million liters of molasses. A sticky wave 10 meters high killed 21 people and injured 150 more. Now, molasses is used to make rum, so I wonder if Boston was as dry then as it was during the Ice Age. The ice sheet was heavy enough to cause the North American plate to sink slightly into the asthenosphere, much like how heavy cargo causes a ship to float lower in the water. When continents do this, it is called isostasy. In New England, the land was around 20 meters lower than normal. But it was still high and dry because sea level was so much lower. As the ice melted at the end of the last glacial maximum, the land very slowly began to rebound. Isostatic rebound is a slow process. The ice sheets melted and the water returned to the sea long before the North American plate sprung back up. Sea level was back to normal, but the land was not. What are now hills 20 meters above sea level were islands 10,000 years ago. Sea level goes down as the ice builds. In response to the weight of the ice, the land sinks. Then the ice melts, sea level goes back up, as does the land in its own time. It sounds simple, but I've left out a few details. Isostatic rebound isn't linear. It's relatively quick early on, around 2 meters a year, but the rebound speed decays exponentially. That is, it gets slower and slower. And the ice doesn't just suddenly melt all at once. It's melting all the time. In the northern hemisphere, ice is added in the north, and the ice moves south where it melts. The glacier begins to shrink when the rate of melting in the south is faster than the rate of growth in the north. What this means is that the weight of the ice shifts gradually north when the glacier retreats. When a diver walks to the end of a diving board, the board bends from the weight. The land responds similarly. So not only does the land sink then rise as ice comes and goes, but it also tilts. Glacial ice carries vast amounts of sand, gravel, and rock. All this material gets deposited at the southernmost extent of the ice in what is called a terminal moraine. The moraine acts as a dam building a natural reservoir of glacial meltwater. In the Connecticut River Valley, there was one such lake, Glacial Lake Hitchcock. Since glaciers carry so much sediment, some of it ends up in the lake. And when sediment settles out of a lake, it forms horizontally bedded deposits. And as you would expect, you can find horizontal deposits left by glacial Lake Hitchcock. But there are also some deposits that are inclined. This is from the way the land tilts as the weight of the ice shifts when glaciers recede. You might think that ice is irrelevant in geology, 
especially when compared to the strength and permanence of a continent, but ice has a different opinion. The ice may come and go, but it will leave its mark on the land.